I, that's one of the things I don't, just to get started, that's one of the things I don't really remember. What what was your original background before you started doing this? So my original background was actually two things. I went to a uh, culinary school. So I got a culinary degree. Yeah. So um, I actually was a cook. Uh, really was a chef, but I didn't get the full recognition Yeah. Um, as the chef. But I, I really pretty much ran... Uh, two, three restaurants in total here in Tampa. Okay. So, um, yeah. And what what style uh, of restaurants were they? Um, the first one was really uh just me, just um basically just building my bones, which was uh a Tex Mex, a Mexican Tex Mex. Nice. All it right. was a nice, it was a nice restaurant though. And then the second one, I worked at um I worked at another restaurant called Dats. Uh, that's it's a really good restaurant here in Tampa. Okay. Very, yeah, very popular. Um, they sell all kind of food. They have, uh, I think over 150 imported beers and wines, so it's very popular. Um, this third one was I worked at Miller's Ale House. Okay. So under the GM at Miller's Ale House, I basically ran the whole restaurant. So what got you into cooking? What what? Um, Honestly, I wanted to cook for the ladies. <laughs> that's the that was that's the real the truth. Best. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's 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 the truth. I, I I wanted to cook for the ladies, but I end up finding a real interest in it. Um, yeah. the restaurant business is a very high paced business. Yeah. Yes, my family owned a chain, so I totally get it. Yeah, it's gruesome. So if you can if you can perform under pressure, which that that's my forte, it was perfect for me. Right. So the so, cooking must work because I think you're married and got a little one, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> so and it so worked. <laughs> did. So I was cooking um, and I was, um, it wasn't enough to pay the bills, not to my standards. Yeah. So I started um, doing construction in the daytime. So okay. um, I Man, cook at working. night. Yeah, I would cook at night and I was a roofer during the day. Wow. So I did roofing. Holy cow. I had two W-2 jobs. I would get a W two. I would get a paycheck every week from the roofing company, and yep. I would get a paycheck every two weeks from the restaurant. So, so what was the leap from that? What was your first entrepreneurial endeavor? Um, a handyman business. I started a handyman company okay. under the same roofing company. So I was working for the roofing company, and then um, I will always see these guys pull up in the nice trucks, and they would go inside inside the AC. Yeah. And uh they were and you were out on the roof burning up yeah, out in the Florida. <laughs> so one day I asked one of the guys that was coming out, uh, hey, what, what is it that you guys doing there? And they were telling me they do a lot of handyman stuff, a lot of painting, uh drywall, um, uh, putting in fixtures, things of that nature. And so I approached the um construction company that I was doing roofing with and I asked them uh if they had any extra side work that I could do maybe on the inside. Interesting. Yeah, and then so they um uh, they was like, sure, of course, we have tons of work that we can't get through. And um, so I asked them about it. They said their response was, uh, you're already on payroll payroll for roofing. Uh, we don't want to bulk your pay on payroll on our books, or we don't want to also uh add another W um W two for you or pay stuff for you. Sure. So they um they challenged me. They said, hey, if you go get your own company, get the insurance, things of that nature. And then approach us with all the documents. We will sub all of the handyman work to you. And so uh, I went home that night, my first time on Sunbiz here in, in Florida on the Secretary of State. Yeah, went on, figured it out, got it, um, got the insurance in the morning, and I pulled up back to their office with everything. Twenty four hours, you just showed up with everything you had to do. Everything. Yeah, and then, so from which that, is a I theme know. with you. The the amount of hustle you have just blows me away. It's absolutely impressive. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gets you started in that. Um, what what was next? Did you go into credit repair at that point, or was that later? No, I'm sorry, man. It's it's kind of a real journey. No, don't apologize. I mean, um, that's what people love to hear, sort of the stories of how you get where you are, you know? Yeah, so my whole goal from the get-go, from before I even started uh, working construction or anything, my whole goal was real estate. That was my whole goal. You, that was the end goal at the time was to oh, get there. It was. Yeah. And every time, it was like every time that you, um, I get close to it, there was something else that needed to be done in order to get there. 
Yeah. And um, once I started the handyman business and I began to pick up, I had those that, those guys on the construction company and I started to pick up business elsewhere as well. Okay. And so I was trying to get into real estate. I go to these real estate meetups in my local area. I meet with people. I'd want to do real estate, but they look at my construction work and just book me for that instead. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I kind of want to go here, but this is paying the bills and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, actually, um, I got out of the restaurant business. I was, um, I went to a meetup one time. I met this couple, the couple, they had, uh, been skipped out on by one contractor and they were trying to finish their project. And so I, um, I bid on it. They wanted me to come look. I look, I met with them. I bid it on it. I underbid on purpose because I just wanted to just run the business, the business. So yeah. I underbid and, um, I came in at 38,000. Yeah. The project was probably worth about 43, 44. Yeah. So was that the at, biggest project you had worked on at the time? 38K? At that time, yeah. At that yeah. time. And yeah. so um, I was charging a certain amount up front. Once they gave me that um check up front, I went back to the restaurant. I said, hey, I'm going to have to put in my two weeks. See y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> my mission here is complete. Uh, they were sad, but, you know, it's a business. I know they move on. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, that was my that was how I got out of the restaurant business completely. I've never been back. Did you know, so you went from roofing to other type of renovation work, I would summarize together. Did you know mm -hmm. how to do that type of work or did you just figure it out as you were going? I did not know how to do that type of work. Now I'm, I was an awesome roofer. Yeah. But, um, so, so you're handy, but you didn't know how to do that. So did you just right. kind of figure it out as you were like, I'm gonna figure this out. Off I go. Yeah. So what I did was I put out a lot of ads on Craigslist to get people. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I worked beside them. So I'd have all the work and then I put out ads on credit list. I yeah. hired guys and we I'd work beside them. And honestly, I learned a lot until I'm I got sure. those guys are super talented. Like I, there was a guy who came to do some drywall for us one time. And I told him, I go, this is an art form. Like it I'm is. not good at it. You know, this is a complete art form to be good at that stuff. It's just something I'm not, but yeah. what I so love, I, well, that's another thing I've always loved about you is just your willingness to like dive in and figure stuff out. That's why I wanted to ask that question for people to hear is that it wasn't that you knew exactly what you were doing. You just saw an opportunity and you were like, I'll figure it out. Like in 24 hours, I got the license, I got the insurance, I show back up, I get the gig. Next thing you know, I'm doing a project for somebody else, 38K. And like and the whole time, I'm just figuring this out as I go. And I think a lot of people, when they get started in entrepreneurship, they feel like they have to have all the answers. And I don't, I would assume you agree that's not the case. Like if you're someone who's just willing to hustle and put in work, you can learn. Yeah. And and that's that's what scares a lot of people is the unknown. You know, that my my motto is um none, none of us, we can't get out of here alive. So we might as well give it all we got, you know, just yeah. take your shot, give it all you got. It it it'll fall where it's supposed to fall, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, this is going to be the third time I've said this saying today, which is, um, it's a little philosophical, but the idea is to die daily and be reborn each morning, right? Same idea, which is just work like crazy and yeah. start over the next day. That's so serious. let's talk, let's talk, let's talk about what you're doing today. So you got, you, and there's probably even some more in between, I would imagine, but there, eventually there. you end up doing the credit repair space, right? Yes. Talk, 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 talk through how you kind of got started there. So with that, how uh, the credit repair came along was um, once I started the handyman business, I was still looking to get into real estate. And um, I got wind from one of those meetings that I could get a line of credit for the business instead of me just using my own funds. And um, I went to the bank. Obviously, they denied me. I knew nothing about credit. And yeah. so I from that point, I did hire somebody to fix my credit and to help me. Gotcha. build it, And they did. Um, to their to their knowledge, so I was able to come back and secure another a line of credit for fifty thousand. Okay, and I started using that to invest with. Um, I did uh destroy my credit again. Um, and when you say invest, by the way, was that in real estate? In real estate, yeah. Okay, okay. And so I did destroy my credit again. Uh, just just utilization things of that nature, using a lot of. Uh, yeah. personal credit cards versus so just for those who don't cards. know utilization just keeping your available balance at the top of your just keeping it really funded right. yeah. yeah that utilization will be priority when going to get funding or applying for a credit right and um so 
Uh, once I finished, once I my credit was uh, in a place that I did not like, again, uh, the person that I used to fix it, they weren't available anymore. And so I, yeah, so I did a deep versus pen because I paid thousands of dollars for that, um, for, for their business to, yeah. you know, to get there. For business. them to help you. Yeah. And so, so you um, just, you, they weren't there and you were like, well, here I go again. I'm just going to figure this out for myself. Uh, once again. Yeah, so, here we are. So I hear a theme. Yeah. <laughs> once again. So I'm, I, uh, I was just up late one night. I'm like, man, I have to, um, I have to fix this thing. I have to get back where I was because it was a great feeling. My credit was probably around a 770, yeah, you know, it's really high. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and then it had dropped to about the low six, like a five something. Yeah. Like a 596. Yeah, which is, you know, most lenders under a 600, they're like, mm -mm, not going to happen. Right. Yeah. And you know, a person that's at a 770 and a person that's at a 596, those are two completely different people in life. Yeah. Mentally, uh, how you're walking around every day, what's available to you, you know, your approach to certain things. And you can say that because you've been there, right? It's not yes. just sort of, yeah, I mean, you, 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 you felt like a totally different person. And, and I did, you know, because I knew that certain doors that were open before were closed. Yeah. Um, but so what I did was I actually, um, Instagram has been a lifesaver for me. I actually went on Instagram and I scraped, I went to the search bar. Um, and I just put credit repair and I scraped and scraped and I found key people that I felt uh, were uh, valid or reliable. Right. And what they were teaching. Because in that <laughs> space, there can be some who aren't. And that's true. It's important to point out. But so you went and found people who you really valued their opinion and, and trusted them. And I and I buy courses and then I take one course and I take another course and I fuse them together and I extract I information until I created something that actually works, you know, which we'll get to that. That's how we bumped into each other, you and your course taking. Right. But so right, you right, took right. a bunch of, yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. take a bunch of courses and all of a sudden you're, you're like, so at what point did you switch from I'm fixing my own credit to, huh, there's a business here. Be uh, the, it actually started with the people around me. Uh, they, really? Yeah, they start to see the results of my credit being fixed. Uh, they, I start to tell them about, hey, I just got this line of credit for the business, or you know, and they'd ask me questions. How'd you? How'd do you it? do that? And, right. Yeah. And so I started on um, pro bono uh, for my family. Just I, helping your family and friends. Yeah. You're like, I, I know how to do this. I'm gonna. Yep. So I fixed my mom's credit. Uh, we got. I fixed her credit. Then I we got her LLC. She was able to get funding for her LLC. Uh, then I fixed a friend's credit and he was able to get funding for it. All this is pro bono work. Right. But did so, you find it important though? Because it gave you sort of what I would call test cases or when you write software, you call them beta, beta cases. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was the opportunity granted you weren't getting paid, but you were helping people you cared about clearly. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you were getting to implement what you had been learning in a, what I might call a safe test case environment where you're not getting paid thousands of dollars by a customer per se and trying to figure it out, you just got to kind of test it. Did you find that pretty, pretty valuable just to get to test it? Yes, it, it was, it was definitely valuable because I wanted to, um, first, my first goal was to provide value for the people around me. And, and by me doing that and, um, me really being dedicated to seeing them at the finish line, it, it gave me the energy to do it for other people. So, um, you know, they after that they would refer me, and people would ask me, "How much do you charge?" I didn't have a number. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, right? I don't, <laughs> you know? I don't know, because I didn't even realize this is a business. But all of a sudden, mm -hmm. here I am. And I, I didn't want to sound, I didn't want to uh, sound salesy or be, or you know, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, one of your first things is you fear being salesy. You know, you think it's a bad thing, but once this I start, really important. People, yeah, you know, and so you have to change, you have to have a mindset shift about being salesy versus helping people. And yeah. I realized that I was helping people because uh, this one lady, she came and she was trying to refine, she was trying to, uh, she was renting to own. The owner wanted to give her the property, um, but he wanted her to refinance it in her name. Right. She had debt to income ratio um, problems and also her credit score wasn't up to par. And she had some derogatory marks that needed to come off. So um, when she came to me, that was one of my first situations where I really realized, hey, I'm helping somebody. 
and yeah. she was able to get the house and refinance it. And she made she it's had a win win, right? She gets the house. You had about a hundred thousand dollars once she refinanced the house. Oh, because, wow. Yeah. So as soon as she refinances, she's got value sitting in that home that she finally got to control because it was hers instead of paying somebody else. And that that was a mindset shift for me from going from feeling salesy to understand that I'm actually providing a service that can change someone's life. Yeah. So so now so now the business is really focused around. So what what all does Elite Pro Advisors offer to folks? What What sort of services? So right now what we're offering is business funding. Um, for your business, we can get you anywhere between 75 to 250 K for the business yep. via lines of credit, business credit cards. And we have some alternative lending too, if your credit isn't where we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, we're not, we're not, it's like a store. We're not actually marketing for credit repair, but if you need business funding services and you don't necessarily qualify right up front. If it takes the credit repair to get there, you'll do it. Yeah, because we don't want to leave anybody behind. You know, we don't want you to come and you really want funding, but your credit's not up to par and we just throw you to the wayside because a lot of people like that, they'll give up and you'll never hear from them again. Yeah, their business, so. their dreams are dead because they couldn't get what they needed. Because, okay, so it's not like your primary thing anymore necessarily, more just on the capital, the funding side for people. But again, if people need help, you do that for them to help them get there. Right. So, so what does that normal process look like in terms of taking someone from say A to Z? You've so walked me through process, it before. Okay. So the normal process would be uh, somebody contacting us, or um, we do some cold outreach as well. Okay. Um, yeah, we do some cold. How outreach. do you do? You mind sharing how you do the cold outreach? Like what? What, what yeah, are your we, channels? We do, uh, we do cold emailing. You do. Yeah, we do call emailing. So we uh will email out to um business owners, small business owners, small okay. to medium size business so where owners. Where are you getting your lists from in terms of that? Uh I have a VA, a virtual assistant. You got a virtual assistant that just kind of goes out and scrapes business owners and pulls it down and then and then is she emailing or or she or he are they emailing out a script you've already prepared or yes. some sort of you they are. The V the VA is a whole another uh, yeah, another another discussion. <laughs> We'll do yeah, that but, for sure too. But your your VA, your virtual assistant, they'll essentially they're getting paid for the work they do for you. And um you have to train them. Yeah. So you have to train them. Well, the reason I want to call out how you were doing it is I think I've introduced you to Rude via email. I don't know if y'all had a chance to talk, but the other gentleman I, I interviewed recently is a software engineer, and he's he's now doing the funding piece too through, from okay. having taken the course. Uh, if I didn't introduce you, I meant to, and I will. But anyhow, so he he's doing it slightly different. So that's why I wanted you to call out how you're doing the email piece. He's because of his software background, he's using software to do all of this. Whereas you've got a, which makes sense. He's an engineer. Uh, you've got your VA doing it. That's why I'm going to kind of call it the differences, but both work. So your, your VA is just kind of going out, finding opportunities and then sending it out to them. How, how does it work from there? Do you pick it up once they're willing to have a discussion or? Yeah. So on um, myself, and then I also have a part-time uh, person that'll pick up calls. Okay. Um, he uh this person is very good uh with relationships building relationships okay and I'm basically I play the role as the closer because um what I'm good at is actually just bringing reality to people and letting yep. them know where they at where we need to go what it's going to take to get there you know without any other fluff because that that's the thing in this industry that I want to bring is reality you know of course we're going to market of course we're going to have uh, you know, we have to dress it up, but at the same time, I want you to understand how serious it is, what you're embarking on yeah. and, and know that we can get it done for you. What, what are some of the things that, that you're sort of fighting against? Like you, you said, you're focused on reality. I'm, I, I get a sense of what you're saying, which is there are people out there who market it inappropriately sometimes. What are, what are some of the common sort of myth things that you're seeing out there that you think people should watch out for? Um, honestly, you mean to, to watch out for as far as who they're employing? Yeah, you're, you're clearly trying to do Over. business the right way in a trustworthy, honest way. You're trying to market the business in an honest way. You're saying that when you talk to them, you're trying to make sure they understand the, what the reality is. So an example might be there's people show up and think that tomorrow they're going to get funding because you fixed their right. credit, right? So what are some of those things that you're sort of fighting against in the way you do things the right way? What are some of the things you're trying to keep people from from believing as um, part of that process? Honestly, it would, it would, be, the, it would be the quick fix. 
that yeah, is would, the issue. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that would be the it would be the quick fix. The time that it really takes. Uh the funding part is the easy part. But it is. Yeah, you know, that's the fun part. But you being in position for the funding, that is the part. That's the reality. Um, yeah. Cre coming up with your documents. Uh it's one one issue may be once you say documents, uh there may that may present a cloud and somebody's right, they're like, oh my lord, what does that look like? Right? All you know, this all this paper I gotta get together. So yeah. you just have to, I try to simplify the process as much as possible. Um, I know that a lot of business owners uh they come when they don't need they come when they need it, not when they don't. Yeah, and stay there for a second. That's a really important point for to get because I say the same thing. I'm like, don't apply for capital when you need it. Like apply for it before you need it, right? Have it in place. So you you yeah, that's a really, really, really key thing. So you say the business funding side is really the easiest piece. What why do you why is that? I'm guessing you just got a great process in place for how you do it and yeah, I feel like work um, I have a great process in place for uh, how we get people funded. Um, I got a good network. My network has been almost handpicked. Um, some I love to go local. If if a if a business owner is outside of our um network locally, then I will find banks in their network to network with. Right. Yeah, I think that's another important. You're making a lot of great points. We we have similar philosophies, so I, it's the same. I've had people they'll ask me all the time. They'll say, "Well, I took the course. I've got this lender list. Which ones do I work with?" And I'm like, "Which ones are near your borrower?" Because a lot of lenders like to stay within their community. Yes, many of them are national. I don't want to play that down. Like there are plenty of lenders that are you can get through the course access to that are national lenders. But also staying local is a really, really important thing. Did you did you do that from the beginning or what what did it take for you to sort of figure out that that, that was the right way to go? So, yeah, I actually did it through trial and error and I did it um, locally because I had gotten funding for my company. Your own, th your own experience. As well. Yeah. And then, so those referrals and uh, those contacts at the banks, I, I started to leverage those to send uh, my clients there as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this that you're working on, the reason, I, another reason I wanted to bring you on is, you know, we've talked about this, you and I have personally, I focus on much larger real estate deals just because that's my preference, but you do a lot of working capital lines of credit, things like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, is there something particular you like about those loans or it's just what you, again, you experienced yourself having that for your own business or, or maybe it's because, I mean, one of the things I will say about that model is that every business needs it, right? Like every business could use having some cap lines of credit available to them, even if they're not going to use it at a given time. So is that that what you sort of like about that approach or is it something different? Yeah, I, I like that approach because um it allows business owners to have working capital yeah. uh, to utilize. And on top of that, um, there are certain thresholds that the, the lending requirements are um that's strengthful great great point yeah. really great point where but do you see that break happening and then let's talk a little bit more about why that's the case around the 50k mark yeah yeah and so at 50k a lot of times a lot of them are doing almost instant approvals if, if they're not instant they're very quick they don't require as much documentation right you you want to expand on some of that like why why you why you said that that's uh less stringent Yes, because if you keep it under 50K, like you said, it's less documents required. Um, your personal credit will play a big factor, which obviously we've already got you prepped for that. Um, yep. we, right. And so with the credit, we understand the algorithms and we understand what banks are looking for. Um, and your banker doesn't necessarily, your banker wants to get you approved, but your banker doesn't necessarily know uh, how what you need to present as far as yourself in the business. And that's where we come in that we know what uh, the bankers want and we know what you need. So we play that middle role and we get you to where you need to yeah, be. There's, uh, let me stay there for a minute too. There's a lot of people to understand like usually the banker you're talking to has no underwriting authority whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They're just taking applications or information onto an underwriter in the background. And so that's where being a broker is very handy because you understand actually how the process works. There's so many of these bankers on the front end who've never done these loans, don't really understand what's going on with it. So or don't I think that product either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, um, we use the products. The products that we promote to other people or uh, that we broker, we actually use the products ourselves. So we have experience with the products. We know what what the requirements are. 
we yeah. know what they, uh what's needed and you know so we're we're really just showing you uh how to use something that's already been done well, like I said, that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is just to give you a chance to tell your story. But also, you know, there are a lot of people who have taken the course, other brokers, people watching these things on YouTube and stuff. And I think you're a great resource for people like that, because, again, you're playing in a space that I don't necessarily teach as much or play in. Not that either is better than the other. I, I just think it's great what you do there. And you make some great points, like people who want to get started early brokering deals, starting on the small side is a great place to start because it is much quicker and you can move along faster. Then maybe the paydays aren't as big, but big old real estate deals take forever to close. And sometimes they just don't. And you've done all this work and I got yeah. paid. So I maybe right. I'll move in your direction <laughs> with your model. You know, I don't know. But um, yeah. I think that's really awesome. If people. Well, so before we get to that, I'm curious. So you kind of got the model running really well now. Is there something else you're eyeing uh, for your business model down the road? What 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 I what what am I going to see in the future from you? What, what do you think is coming? You got some other stuff um, you're doing? I mean, the goal is the goal is to provide in-house capital. So that oh, that's you want to do it yourself. Yes, that is the you goal. Build a fund and do it yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Amazing. because um, by us understanding the underwriting process, and I've learned a lot from your course as well. Thanks, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, your course has been played a very, very instrumental part in everything. Thanks. Uh, took the it took the part that was kind of a gray area in my mind, and um, I was able to actually just clear it all up, put a plan in place and just start to execute. You're like, why, why shouldn't I be uh, lending the money out? So you think you just build a fund and take investors in to be able to lend it out? That's what you're going to yes. do? Yes. That's Is that, how close are we on that? Is that coming soon or you're working uh, yeah, on it? Yeah, that's coming soon. Um, we, I actually, uh, a lot of the, a lot of people, I build a lot of trust uh, with people that I have gotten funded and also others that whose credit we've built up. So um, a lot of them right right now I'm into I'm trying to master the uh, SBA loans, yeah, SBA seven eight loans. Yep, you we know, talked about that on the phone. Yeah, right. so I, I've taken a liking to those. Uh, great, really great opportunities. Yeah, and the, by the way, just for you and everyone else following your model of working on the lower end of capital requirements, there's a whole program called an SBA Express program, which is half a million dollars or less. And mm -hmm. if you can find lenders who are SBA Express approved. That's another way to follow your model of, well, smaller loans move faster through the system. Same thing with the SBA Express. So it's a great place for you to focus and anyone else that happens to watch this. For sure. And um, just to streamline me taking your course and um, what I know at this point, I would say uh, to other people that's taking the course or getting into the course, yeah. um, don't fear getting on the phone. You know, if, if you're going to, yeah, seriously, uh, Make a list of your banks, your local banks. Start locally if you have to, and call them. Um, a lot of major banks they won't necessarily um, partner with a smaller company, yeah, which is fine. Uh, but you can ask them, uh, "Do you mind if I send someone to you?" Right. Not, not as a referral, but I would just recommend you, you right? Know, because, uh, some of them won't pay re referrals fees, and that's cool. But you have other ways to make sure you still get paid. Right. So you, right. you should have a contract in place uh, for you and uh, the client, whoever you're getting, helping to get their lender. And you get that on the front end before you take them to a lender in case the lender won't pay the fee. Is that what you follow? The process you follow? Um, I get a portion on the front end. I get a portion on a the portion front. of your fee. Okay. My fee on the front end, which okay. is, I collect um 1% on the front end. That is that, way. is that when credit repair is involved or just in general? So the credit repair is a, a totally different price. Totally separate thing. So, yeah. uh, well, the reason I'm pausing here is because yeah. I do teach it a little bit different. And I'm not, again, this is not a right or wrong. <laughs> what I want people to hear is you can get paid on the front end. So if you remember, I teach it where it's success fee only, right? But mm -hmm. what I want everybody to hear is I'm not always right. Ken's able to go out and charge 1% on the front end. Yes. And, but, and which is great because then you're getting paid for your time and energy to try and go out and find them capital. I, I'm assuming there's some people who don't want to do that, that right? Is fact. That but is fact. but there that does that just mean they're just not right for your business, right? Is that yeah. how you approach yes. it? It's yes, like I'm you're going to have to put out all this time and energy to go help them. There should be some compensation on the front end. And what we're really talking about on 50k is 500 bucks, right? right? And so imagine imagine uh, and 500 is the minimum that we will charge. Okay, okay. Yeah, so even if it's 25k, you still get 500. It makes sense, right? 
right? Because um, we're working very hard for the client, you know. I think this is a great point. And we're using our network. And uh, let's just say if I meet if I meet someone locally and we can have coffee, that's a different story versus if yeah. I meet you and I'm in Florida and you're in Massachusetts, you know, and we having conversations via online, Zoom and on the phone. Um, and we do this hard work for you and we get you funded and we're expecting a payment on the back end and we don't get it. I mean, how much can we pursue you? you know, after that, other than yeah. you just stop answering. I think it's a great point. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll change my stance on it. Yeah. No, I think yeah. it's a great point. I mean, I've struggled with that myself over, over the years when I was brokering, where I was like, golly, I was chasing deals down for people for sometimes weeks or months on end. And, you know, it, so I think that's a great point. Or, for or everyone. Also be wary of um, um uh, the renegotiation tactic. That's why you need to have that contract. Those contracts are very important. Yeah. You know, um, they I I I make sure it's signed on both ends yeah. because I need to be able to enforce that in case that you don't want to um perform or you attempt to renegotiate at the end. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's um, a great point. I'm glad you added that part to it as well. Yeah. Well, thanks. No, I, this is awesome. Like I that's is this is what's so fun about doing these things, is, is I learned too. And I tell you, I have just always been impressed with your your how smart you are and your hustle. I, I've learned from you. So thanks for being willing to sit down and share your wisdom with me and everybody else who's going to see this. That's really, really cool. Uh, to wrap us up, if people want to connect with you, what's the best place to do it? Is it the website? Is it Instagram? What is it? So the website is really easy. It's EliteProAdvisors.com. And then Instagram, you can um, find me at Ken. So elite, K E N S O, then the word elite. That's it. Just plain like that. Very cool. I yes, appreciate sir. you taking the time, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you.